But I'm not the dumbest either. If you let me run into a wall enough times, I'm going to figure out it's a wall. That's what happened with trying to record these videos. I, I would get the camera working and then the uploads wouldn't work. I'd get it working on a laptop and then I wouldn't work on the computer. When it wouldn't work on the computer, it worked on the laptop. When it worked on the laptop, it didn't work on the computer. One way or another, as strange and as foolish as this sounds, God is in control. <laughs> but you knew that, didn't you? You knew that all along, Jesus is in control of all of our circumstances. That there had no temptation, no situation, no circumstance, no any predicament or any challenge with which you go through life that God has not already seen, already known, already heard, and already written in his book how to get out of it. Because he provides a way of escape, so he already knows your situation. He knows what you're going through. He knows how you should do it. Matter of fact, I recorded probably three or four, maybe five glorious videos about Utah and what people are telling me, and sooner or later I'll get them uploaded to YouTube because right now, for some reason, off of the laptop, I <coughs> pardon me, excuse me, I can't get them uploaded. So they may be in 15-minute segments. They might be in whatever segments. However I do it, one way or another, I've always been able to get done, even when God says no, something that I try to do anyways. Well, you know, he lets you go with what you do, sometimes stupidly. But anyways, the videos are good, but the point God was trying to make, it looks like, and I'm working on this, and you might be joining me in prayer for Utah Video, that we recorded once inside and I was dumbfounded because most of the time I can't record with this camera inside. Now it's working fine inside. We've got lots of light that streams in. I got light coming in from everywhere. I got more light than I know what to do with. So would I record inside? I loved outside. Outside I would do it in Sacramento. I would do it in Dunnigan. I would do it wherever I was at. Anywhere I went I would record outside. I guess God wants to go on the inside. Because he never seems to do anything with me exactly the same. We never just get a chance to, like, in ministry, automatically do what we've already done. You know, even coming to Utah, I've discovered that, you know, in working in the ministry, I've moved into a different means and ways and opportunities and possibilities and things that God wants done that, well, it may be similar to what I've done, but it's not exactly the same. And by golly, I think I like it. <laughs> because he stretches you. Benny Hester, in one of his famous songs from way back when, that just has been recently like resurfaced and everybody loves it, is he's going to squeeze you just because he loves you. You'll know him better for the things he brought you through. Yeah, man, ha! he's going to squeeze you one way or another. He's going to hold you like this. We used to be called slippery Christians, you know, that were swimming upstream, kind of like minnows or kind of like really salmon. And God's going to grab a hold of you, and you're like one of those slippery Christians, you know, that bears grab a hold of you, and you slip around, you know, trying to get away and get upstream. Well, you know, sometimes I'm like that. You know, I don't get the message right away. It takes me a little bit of thinking, a little bit of dumbing, you know, dumbing up. Sometimes i got to dumb up and just smack that wall one more time. I think I will, too, you know, because it looks like, looking over at the computer, this might work, it might not. We'll see. But as we are developing these things... As we are learning and applying and appropriating those teachings with which even the early church found out the hard way, even though they had the Holy Spirit and they were doing things the mighty way, they didn't go off on the way that Jesus said. When he sent them out, they should have gone out, and they didn't go out, so eventually in 70 AD, he kicked them out, you know, Jerusalem. Because they weren't getting out like they were supposed to. Oh, some of them were, you know, we got Paul and Barnabas shooting out, you know, shooting around, and, you know, then you got the disciples kind of like, you know, playing dice, you know, and saying, hey, we don't know what we're doing, so let's just pick this guy. He looks good. Matter of fact, he smells good. Uh, you know, he might be good. He might make a disciple. He might make an apostle, so we'll pick him. You never hear from him again. That could be a good thing. That could be a bad thing. Some people think that maybe Paul's the other disciple. Doesn't take a genius on the Jewish side to figure that one out. But hey, you know, if the church wants to play, no, okay. You guys go argue like Greeks, you know. I'm going to go play like... Revelation. Oh, God did something and blew their mind. And he does that all the time. That's what the Jesus movement was about. That's kind of what I'm about. That's kind of what sometimes God uses certain people to kind of bring about things that don't make any sense. 
that are kind of like an enigma, people call it, or kind of like a paradigm or a paradox. You know, it's kind of like, well, how did that work out? Where did he come from? Where did she come from? How did God do that? Where's the Holy Spirit? Whoa! We thought we understood. Now we find out more so that God could be in control of all these things? How did that work out for good? Hmm. Hmm. And Arsenio Hall's back. Hmm. That's weird. <laughs> but knowing that, all these things, all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Everything we've done in Utah Vidivo has always been right, has always been pure, has been holy, has been wonderful, has been things that should be done, that could be done, that would be done, had we more money. But the point is, God has put this together. We're sitting in the office getting ready to build behind us more of a studio effect. We might be doing sound effects, we might, who knows, maybe God's bringing in a camera. But one of the things that he's been impressing upon me that today I was so kind of like, okay Lord, I've hit this wall one time too many. My nose is broken. Well, at least I keep telling people that. That's why it's so big. You see, this nose right here, yeah, that one, uh-huh. I tell people it's broken. You know, That's why it's so big. Do you believe me? Boy, you are gullible. You need to really learn how to prove all things full fast, which is good. But my point being this, it's very simple if you just kind of learn your lessons well and in his timing he will tell us what to do, where to go, what to say. Matter of fact, that's a Calvary Chapel worship song. He has shown the old man what is good and what the Lord requires of thee. But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Yeah, really. That's how we memorize scriptures in the Jesus movement. You want to be a evangelical, kind of like, you know, dynamite cracker kind of guy, you know, where you always got a scripture on your mind, you're always sharing the word of God, you always got some scripture, you know, speaking forth and talking forth and sharing and relating in some way the scriptures and some personal dynamic that you know you wouldn't realize that you could have done all along if you just sung it rather than think it that's what the Jesus movement was about we just sang all the scriptures you know we made them into worship courses and by golly we learned the scriptures that way oh you can go out and memorize books you know I love to watch some guy regurgitate looks like he can talk like a parrot but he can't think like one <laughs> well you know so when we have this kind of situation I like to explain it I like to say to you in ministry, hey, look what happened to me, man. Whoa! Smack in the wall. It ain't so fun, but you won't fall that way. Because, you know, if you fall down, that's different. But smack in the wall means you're running. You're hitting it, you know. You're hitting that bag over and over and over. You know, football training, do you get it? You kind of get the picture here? Come on, guys. It's football season. You can get this. You know, we'll work with you. Come on now. You know, the coach is standing up on that little, you know, kind of sled, you know, and the guy's hitting it again and again and again, and the wall's moving, 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 moving. Well, then eventually when they get done hitting it, they run around to the next trial. Because you're not supposed to go through the wall. You're not supposed to even move the wall really too much, but you know, you're moving it because you're supposed to hit it to build up endurance, to build up strength. It's so that your legs can launch off and shuck into and chuck that thing, you know, and hit it hard, build you up. I kind of look wimpy, don't I, man? I'm not built up by this. <laughs> At least not where you can see. Woo! But my point is this. Being such, we like to share those things that God is doing and teaching us and causing us to learn so that should it change, we know that God either did or didn't do it. We have a record of it. We're told that there's a book of remembrance that those who spoke of the Lord, that talked to the Lord, their names were written in this book of remembrance that the angels keep. Now, it's not the Lamb's book of life. It's not the, the book of, you know... God's the Father, you know, book where we're being judged by God, you know, and whether it be in there or not, you know, you're dead or you're in hell. But rather, this is the book of remembrance. Whoa, you know, angels have book of remembrance? Yeah, imagine them opening up the book and reading about you. The book of James, the book of Michael, the book of Chris, the book of this, the book of that. <gasps> oh, we're written in the book of remembrance. You mean there's a Bible about us? Yes, three, and everything you did and everything you've done. God, I want grace and mercy, please. Ay, ay, ay. Chihuahua. That all you've done is written in the last book of life. I mean, it was written in the book of remembrance. Well, it actually says that only those things that you did that were really for the Lord, that were really kind of like when you're talking about the Lord and stuff, they write that part down. So don't get too panicky here about your sins, because though they be red as scarlet, though they be white, though they be red as though they be red as crimson, though well they be red as scarlet and crimson, God will make them as white as snow. 
And literally, what he'll take them is, as far as you can throw it from the east to the west, you know, and he'll get rid of them because, you know what, we're going to a place where there's no north, south, east, or west. You're stepping out of this dimension into a reality called the spiritual kingdom, which really has no north, south, east, or west because everything points to the center, which actually is the throne of God. Yeah, it's in the midst. Well, you know, so how do you figure that one out when you're thinking north, south, east, and west, you linear people? It's spherical. <laughs> oh, hmm. But everything faces inward. Oh, hmm. So, if you're up the sphere or down the sphere, how do you work that one out? That's an interesting concept. And we'll talk about that when we get to heaven, won't we? Woo! That'll be interesting. A new dimensional reality that isn't really spherical, but it's an existential coexistent of a spherical type allegorical that goes outward constantly, expansion in a way similar to that with which we say the Big Bang is, because we say the universe is going out and out and out and out and wherever, and it's still moving this way, and it's kind of, the Earth is going this way, and it's going this way along this way, and it's moving along the universe, which is going this way, and you're kind of going, meow. Did you know the universe is doing that? Yeah, it's moving while the Earth is moving, while the Milky Way is moving, while the galaxies are moving, while the planets are moving, while the gravity is moving, while you're moving, and while you're standing, and while the Earth is going around, the sun's going around. I'm dizzy. And that's kind of what our life is like a lot. You know, it's like we didn't realize that God is still moving us, you know, and that God is still doing things, and God is still happening, and that things are still going on, even though we think we see in our little minite, finite, macrocosmic way of our own little things that we want to get done. God still cares about those little details. And he works with us on them. And that's what he's done in the Utah video. He's kind of like, he said, Hey, Michael, you know, um, I, I see what you've done, and I see where you win, and I see where you won, and I see where you were, and I see where you're at. I want to stick you. I want to take you up another step, another notch. I want you to grow up a little more. I have a feeling that God is telling me to. I have these, uh, we call them intros, or prefixes, or anti. Well, anyways, there's a lot of words for them, but they're like kind of, you know, like you've seen on, you know, normal when you go to a Bible study, you know, or you see on a video, you know, somewhere on the internet where it says, Welcome to the Word for Today. The Word for Today is brought to you by, you know, or whatever it is, you know, some intro letting you know who, what, when, where, how, and why, and, you know, send us the money. I mean, that's not Word for Today, but dare I say it's a lot of Christian ministries. But you know what I'm saying. They have the idea of it being a ministry and giving credit where credit is due and saying who's doing what and how this happens and that and the other thing. Well, I got a lot of things like that, similar, but they inspire you to think about Jesus because they're music and they're kind of like, you know, you know what I'm saying. They're an intro. And so they set up for the word. And I put them on some of the videos. There's some early ones that um, from Evotional that have them. And there's some later ones that were preparing for moving to Utah. And there are some that are like really interesting that were from the previous church that I went to, Calvary Chapel, Laguna Creek, that God brought it along just because I was honoring that with which I was hearing because the man that was teaching there, Rich Chafin, was so anointed. And I've seen a lot of pastors, man, you know. There's some guys that are good guys, you know, they, they do some good things, you know. I mean, I, you know, they're good, you know. I mean, you know, more or less when we say good, because we don't really say good because the only one that's good is their Father in Heaven. But... You know, they're, they're, they're like, okay, you know, you give them credit where credit is due, and they, they're awesome in their own way. But when you say anointed, come see me. We'll talk, you know, because I've been around a lot of Calvary pastors, and, you know, there's some that, know how to, that teach, you know, and there's some that are theologically correct, hermeneutically correct, homiletically correct. Some that, you know, are good administrators, some that are good topicalers, you know, that they do a lot of topical, but they don't, you know. Yeah. But, man, there are some that God has chosen that God has called, chosen, anointed, and appointed for a specific purpose. And when you sit there, when you listen, when you pay attention, it's like Jesus is there. Man, I tell you, when I listened and I'm sitting in that sanctuary, I was grinning. And I mean, not like grinning when I do with, you know, some places that I go. Because, you know, I'm supporting the pastor and I'm trying to be that focal point where, you know, because when a pastor's standing up and teaching, you know, they got to look out over the crowd and everybody's looking. I know, like to pastor thing. You know, they're doing all kinds of, you know, you know. You know who you are. And, you know, when a pastor's, you know, up there teaching, you know, he's really having to put up with a lot of distractions. 
you know, and there's a lot of distractions now, especially in the church with drinking, you know, blah, belch, you know, burp, you know, efficate, defecate. Well, they don't do that, but anyway, you know, they flagellate, you know, you know, and somebody thinks that's funny. I don't think so. We're really a bunch of rude, crude dudes in America, I mean, to put it bluntly, because our sanctuaries have become really kind of a travesty and a tragedy of what they should be, you know. But, you know, we're going to do it in the name of getting them in and getting them saved and getting them onward so maybe we can clean up their act because, you know, dogs return to their vomit and pigs do their wallow. So, you know, hey, I don't want to call anybody what they are, but, you know, some things going on are disgusting. But, you know, hey, they're not Jewish, so they wouldn't go to the temple anyways. Woo outer court, Gentiles, woo -hoo. But you know what I'm saying. The point being this, is that pastors, you know, sometimes when I'm sitting in their sanctuary, I'm just grinning because some of their messages, I may not agree 100% sometimes. Yeah, and there's a lot of them that I don't agree maybe most of the time. Yeah, well, you know, it's like, well, that's good for you, but, you know, I'm through, you know, and I'm out of here, dude. But, you know, they, they God uses them for whatever he's meant to use them for, you know, and they're growing through their learning curve. And, you know, that's not going, but growing. And... One of the things that you know we all learn is that each one of us have been given gift, different gifts severally as God chooses, and He uses according to the measure of faith that they've been given, and according to the timing of the Lord. There's a certain timing when they are anointed, appointed, called, sent out, and then suddenly they come into their own, as the old expression used to be. It, they are quickened out of their life. They are crucified from this life. They become likened unto the Son of God, the Son of Man, who no longer live, but Jesus was living in them, and they became no longer themselves, but rather what God wanted them to become. And at that point in time, even Chuck Smith, before he was like in his prime, hitting some really strong teachings, like you know the Holy Spirit series and the first, the one Bible, the first Bible study series was good, but the second one was, you know, we kept it around, and that's one that they pass around, you know, and they always use for Bible schools and all that stuff, you know. And I remember because I was there, I was like, oh yeah, we need to save this series, you know. And, Firefighters for Christ, yeah, oh yeah, this is, wow, this is a good one. You know, this is like, whoo, boy, is he on it or what? And you've heard that before, that expression, they're on it. Well, really, it's just God is using them and anointing them, and they're so blessed. They're sharing almost like directly from Jesus himself. Actually, sometimes that's what I tell you on video. I'm not talking. Guess who took over? <laughs> and I'm used to that because I'm kind of stupid, you know? You know that. All you get to watch a video to learn that one. But my point is this, that in this ministry, you know, we've been learning from the Lord and applying it, and it looks like we're going to put those things that are set up to show you where we come from, and at the end, give you maybe, and maybe there'll be an altar call or some, you know, contact form or some way of means of something, you know, at the end of it too, to think on and ponder on and consider the things which, you know, you've been taught, inspired, conspired, shared, related, or given some type of information about Jesus and somehow related some information that you could make applicable to your life that you would be able to use as the Holy Spirit guides you and provides for you and imbues you with the ability to hear, see, and understand the things of the Spirit for they are spiritually discerning. God would be using me in order to do that with which the ministry is so designed so that you would be able to make it profitable unto you. <gasps> Having said that, I guess that's what God wants to do. He wants me to do less to do more. Because there's, I'll admit, there's some teachings. I go back and I listen to the teachings. Is that, is that ecocentric? Is that like prideful? Well, I don't look at it and go, well, look at Michael, man. He's he really kicking it, man. He's like, I said that? The way I look at it is like, wow, that's awesome. Not the person, the word. And I do that with everybody, you know. I mean, if it's off, I say, hey, you know, I'm not knocking you, dude. You know, I'm knocking the word. You know, whatever you're teaching or whatever you are, you're wrong. But, you know, the point is, it's not you. It's what you're, the, the, the information you're presenting is in error. You know, so the information is error. The person may be learning, you know, so they're not in error. They could be wrong and still be right in some ways because they're learning how to see the light. So my point about looking back at some of the teachings that I've received and taught is that I needed to receive them and I'm learning them. So I, I go back and look at them and go, whew. Man, that must have been the Holy Spirit. It sure wasn't me. And you know, those are things that maybe God wants me to go back and put some prefix and suffix and edit a little bit and make, you know, shiny and whatever. So, I'm recording this to let you know we're working that direction because, man, every day, I mean, it's been like, you know, you, you get up at five in the morning and you start, you know, like working towards the ministry and trying to get things done when it comes to devotional inspiration or you know, the biblical prophecy series or the Bible sites or the websites or, you know, whether it be, you know, expansion of the Facebook pages, you know, there's 40 of them, or, 
you know, development more of the website or, you know, some breaking into more of Twitter or, you know, Pinterest or all the different social medias that we put on hold while we moved in and trying to get things coordinated. Well, that's why we recorded this video, Vidivo, you know, is to kind of let you know that we're working on it. We're, we're never stopping. And basically, we've tried to put some posts up and then, man, it's every day it's been like about four hours of just beating my head against the wall. No. And I'm sorry, but I'm kind of a happy kind of guy. Happy kind of guy. And I'm smiling while I'm beating my head on that wall. Yes, 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 yes. And God's going, no, no, no. You know, you never know. You don't know that? Oh, well, see, in our household, yes is yes and no is no. Some of you don't know that. When God goes, no, 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 no. No matter how much you say yes, no, 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 no. He says no. You ain't getting it. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. God's never told you no. Wow. Good luck with that. But since I like to make it profitable unto you, that you might be able to take from this some meaning and some purpose and some design, I didn't know what the uh, daily light was going to be for today, so I was kind of like going, okay, well, you know, let me just share some light on the subject because that's what the video is recorded for, is to give you some light on what's happening with Utah Video and why there's all these videos that kind of pop up on YouTube and disappear, pop up and disappear, pop up and disappear. <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about. You know, and I'm like, man, I can't get it uploaded and just, you know, <laughs> and eventually if we can get back to it, we will. This particular U Utah Video or Video Utah doesn't have necessarily the, uh, the um, prefixes or suffixes in it. And some of the other ones, you know, you'll see they'll have when, when it's time. But God is probably going to take me and tell me not to spend so much time, you know, like posting tons of material and to be more focused in on maybe the first day record, the second day produce, and the third day post on Utah Vidivo's um, original material, so to speak, that we call it. You know, it's like when we say original material, that means we've we conceived, perceived, developed, prayed about, were inspired by, and made sure that we took every step of the way, our hands on it. You know, we, we put our hands on it, made sure that it's, you know, like just so, so God could use it any way He wants to go. And that's something that we do, you know, on everything that we post on the internet. You know, we make sure that, hey, you know, if it's got my name on it, it better be free because it's not me if it's not. And it better not have any kind of like ad, but, you know, some of the. YouTube stuff, you know, you can't do much with that. You know, it's like, well, you know, you can pay for it, but hey, you know, we haven't been given that kind of money. But the point is, is this. You already know those things when they're not part of the ministry. But sometimes some of those ministries out there, they're kind of shaky, snaky, you know. They're kind of like moving around in the grass, you know, and they want to get your money. <laughs> okay. But with us, freely you receive, freely give. So we want to freely give you an encouraging word from Daily Light, which is just the word. It's pure and simple. It's just scriptures that are quoted. And it's called, En Chachore. Or the well of him that crieth. I mean, im ha. Ah, so it's in ha koi. No, it's not Japanese. I thought I was turning Japanese, but I'm not. You know, a Jew ought to know how to say this. In ha koi. Or ha kore. Holy cow. It's got a hat in it. Really? Ha. Tui. Oh well. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. This spoke he of the Spirit, which they believe on him, should receive. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the window of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, more, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened, because you are sons of God. God has set forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba. Abba, 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 
Papa, hubba, who, what, huh? Oh, well, you know, Daddy. You get that part, right? The Abba might be like, you know, Papa, you know, Papacito. You know, well, we won't go to another language, but we'll stick with Daddy. Because that's kind of, you know, where it's at. Now, there ain't too many people that stand up and go, Daddy, could you just take care of this? You know, I'm having a problem. You know, my fingernails, you know, I mean, I, I mean I'm a valley girl, you know, and I want to get this straight. Well, no, you know, that's want to sound holy, so most people praying in church and, you know, doing the, the holy thing aren't going to say Daddy. They're going to say Father in Heaven, you know, or something like that, because, you know, Jesus said Father in Heaven. But, you know, when he's praying to his Father, you know, he's, he's called him Daddy. You know, he really was. You know, but Jesus said to pray in secret, so, you know, public prayer, you figure out where to go there. But for us... We're starting now, and we're trying to, you know, like I put the plant up, you know, and I clean the room, you know, sort of. It's, you can't see the mess around you, but, you know, there's piles. Sky. Well, okay, I'm exaggerating now. But I always tell the truth. But, you know, there's a mess, and I would turn the camera, but we're still working with the camera. <laughs> Don't fall apart. we got tape, you know, and kind of like it's stay there, camera. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Earthquakes don't. But being up on the third floor, you know, it's kind of like we're the upper room, so we've got this kind of, like, neat thing going on, and every time it's late afternoon the sun shines so maybe God was trying to tell me something about recording and what to do and when to do it and where to do it and I just wasn't catching the message so maybe if this gets uploaded and you actually are seeing it then maybe that's what we're doing when you don't know what's going on with the ministry we're working it now obviously there are other things that I've been doing you know and I'm praying you will bear with us in mind that you know we're Living in a city that, you know, people are keep calling also bad, you know, and I think it's also good. We're living in a state that people keep saying, oh, no, don't go. And I'm going, oh, yeah, come and see. You know, we're doing things with people that people are saying, oh, no, what about them? Ooh, ick, you know, they need Jesus, but. And I'm going, well, let's go, you know. And no, you know, it's just not getting it. You know, so it's like, well, you know, okay, there's some things that, you know, still working out the details. So... For me, you know, just like in the Jesus movement, it's kind of like, you know, where people said, you know, those freaky people, you know, that would go anywhere, do anything, and be anything, you know, I'm kind of like one of those, you know, God's kind of like brought me to a place where everybody's kind of like, they're tired, you know, so am I, you know, it's like, I'm tired of beating my head against the wall, you know, I don't know what everybody else is doing out there, but you know what, I'm in here, <laughs> well, once we got this done, you know, we haven't even been here 40 days, really. But once we got our 40 days in, you know, in Utah, man, I'm expecting some good things. Because, man, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I'm loving it. I'm living it. I'm digging it. Matter of fact, it's kind of neat. You know, it's kind of great. You know, I've been to a few meet and greets, you know, and I've seen some people that, you know, I even had some Jehovah's Witness come up to my door. Man, I had a great conversation. They didn't get much of an order in edgewise because every time she started saying something, I'd share with her and get her laughing. She's carrying on. She's talking. She's smiling. You know, she just was cracking up over the things that I was talking about, you know. And, you know, there's little portions of Scripture she's trying to use, you know, and I'd explain to her about, you know, Ecclesiastes and everything else and how you can use a portion of Scripture and you can only get a part, but, you know, you only see a part and know a part, but, you know, then when Jesus comes, you'll fully know, and then when you know all of it, when you read from the volume of the book from Genesis to Revelation, then you know all of it and you keep it all in perspective, and then you have something to encourage everybody with, because if you only live only in one part, you're only going to get a certain limited perspective, and you really need to let God, you know, driver's seat, so that way, you know, when you're driving a car and going over a mountain, well, you get the picture. Because, frankly... <laughs> Her partner, an elderly woman from Japan, and I started relating to the turn in Japanese. No, actually, I was very polite and I used my cultural instinctiveness, you know, to do deference to those with of age that I know have and are aware of the cultural honor that goes along with being of age. And so it was kind of fun conversation. You know, I got a chance to visit with them. I don't think they're going to come running back. You know, maybe uh, later on by themselves, one by one. You know, to maybe ask more about this happiness and joy that I have to be able to converse with them and they didn't leave blessed because you see if you slam the door on a Jehovah's Witness that's a blessing if you tell a Jehovah's Witness you don't want to hear it that's a blessing if you do anything except for give a cup of cold water to a Jehovah's Witness it's a blessing they feel for being persecuted but Jesus said in Proverbs you know well, well, Jesus didn't say it, but in Proverbs it says, Jesus said it because he's inspired the word of God and the old word of God, Holy Spirit's one, you know, God's one, you know. So. But anyway, it says, in Proverbs, if you give them to your neighbor, you know, your friend, a cup, or your enemy a cup of cold water, you heap fiery coals over their head. Ooh, man, sneaky reachy, you know, but that's what I do. So, you know, if I give you a cup of cold water, be careful. Be careful. You can't see my insides. You have no idea what I'm thinking. Me? Would I do?
do that? My wife, she says, you're so mean. I went, honey, <laughs> I just Sharon. <laughs> she feels sorry for people to knock on my door. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Come on over. You might find out. So if you really want to know what we're all about, it's still Jesus. We're still working on it. We're still trying to get this together. So until the time that God finally reveals exactly how to get the camera working and all the different bugs and rugs and things organized, we'll be moving it around and we'll be finding what it is on solid ground that God wants to build you know, His body of believers here and encourage them and exhort them that though we live in the latter days and though it is time running out, we still can rejoice. We can still look up and have fun. We can still have that joy of the Lord as our strength that can overcome the enemy and anything that we see from the enemy camp it's like who cares oh man you can pull an Elijah call down fire if you want to or you could pull one easier if you're like me you see I like Elijah but Elijah's still coming and he's got work still to do so if you're calling down fire and you're pointing fingers at people you still got work to do and some of the work's got to be done on you but if you're like Elisha you know Elisha not Elijah or we like to say Eliyahu as opposed to Elisha Get that one? But, no, really. Elisha, who told his servant, who came to him and says, Oh my God, you better worry. Here comes the, here come the judge. Here come the army. Here come the, the Syrians. Here come them, that, and the other thing. And man, they got big armies. They got big swords. And you know what? I've been serving you, but I'm out of here, dude. Elisha says, Well, you know, I'm kind of taking a nap. You know, and I was kind of resting. But, you know, Lord, you know, I want to go back to sleep. You know, I don't think I got to do anything. You know, I mean, they're telling me that they're big bad people here in this land. You know, they're telling me all these things I got to worry about. Can you open your eyes? So, God opened up the servant's eyes of Elisha. Uh, maybe that might be my calling. Ooh, maybe that might be the way I do things here in Utah. I'm kind of like chilling it, you know. I'm kind of like smooth sailing, you know. It's like, even in the storms, I'm kind of like, hey, check out the storm, man. The thunder, the lightning, the wind blowing, the blasting water. Oh, come on, throw more, throw more, more, more. Let's walk on water. Let's drown in the sea of His forgiveness and the mercy of His grace and find our place, you know, solid ground where our feet have put themselves because death has no sting. And I'm one of the first ones to tell you that. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> doesn't bother me anymore. So, call me like maybe I went to the school of Elisha because I was watching Elisha and I said, man, I ain't running from that woman. As Elijah did. And as Elijah won't when he comes back with Moses in order to tell the children of Israel a few things they forgot along the way. Won't be pretty. It's not coming back as a blessing, believe me. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> He's got a message to deliver. And right now, Israel could use it. And it ain't pretty. Ooh. Imagine that. Moses and Elijah coming back. Who's he confronting? It ain't the world. Well, it will be in a way, but, you know, he's they're confronting the children of Israel, too, because you know what? Huh? Nasty things going to happen. So, my point is this. I'm looking at sunshine every day whenever I look out my window. I'm looking at rain in the morning sometimes, you know, or in between. I look at sunrise somehow, some way. Wasatch Mountains always seem to have some kind of sunrise for me. You know, it always gets light anyways. So from between the sunset, which it seems to set every day, you know, I don't know why it works that way, but it changes. So I wind up, no matter what the storm is, I get some sun, sun, sunlight. From sunrise to sunset, you know, somehow I always seem to get the brightness, you know, and somehow everybody else keeps telling me how bad it is, and I just keep telling them, it's going to change. Now, Maybe the Lord needs to open your eyes. Maybe you don't see things the same way I do. Maybe you won't. Maybe you will. I don't know. But I went to the school of Elisha, and I'm kind of like, I'm taking it easy. I'm kind of blessed. I'm kind of at rest. And you know what? That's kind of the way that I hope you are. Blessed. Because even when I'm going through all these beating my head against the walls, I'd rather beat my head against the hand that God has put in front of my plans than to keep falling down 
over and over again and stumbling and bumbling and fumbling around in the dark as though I were a blind man, deaf and dumb, and not hearing what God is saying, not doing what God is doing, and not seeing what God is all about. My joy is complete. When you learn to enjoy the fullness that God wants for you to have in knowing Him, in walking with Him, in having fellowship, not just with His Spirit or some presence, with the literal physical manifestation of Jesus appearing to you and knocking on your door, and walking in the door and supping with you, of really Jesus coming to you and saying, My sheep hear my voice, and you are going to hear my voice, and He speaks to you direct. Because, yeah, I love the Word, and I read the Word, and I apply everything to the foundation of the Word, but I'll be honest with you, God has spoken to me direct. Okay, maybe it's a little scary. <laughs> In one way, it's not that fear of, you know, like, dying, but it is kind of like, oh, now what do I do? Oh, oh, I'm a man and done. I know what I am. I know what that is, and I, hear, I know what I hear. And it's like having a conversation when you have God speaking to God like that. Ooh, you boy. You can never deny it again. And I've had to tell other people that, and by golly, just like Elisha's servant, um, they have had the same experience. So I don't know where you're coming from or where you're going or what you're going to do about it, but you know, God's going to reveal himself one way or another. It might be distant, long distance. You may be standing at the bottom of a mountain like Mount Sinai or something, you know, just staying away from God. But you could get a whole lot more intimate and real than you ever dreamed or imagined if you want to, if you'll pursue it, if you'll go after it, if you're willing to beat your head against his hand because he's got you just like the whole world in the palm of his hand and he will take you closer in and even hold you and comfort you in the end of your life but before then why not spend some time with him now and get to know him intimately and personally and real even as the saints of old have said you could even as I am telling you in this generation it's happened it happens and it does go on every day to lots of people everywhere besides me and what I say I know lots of people I run into and they go Man, you know, I was talking to the Lord last night, and like, and I, you know, once in a while, I, you know, someone that's, you know, kind of like, really just like, you know, cruising, I'll say, I'll look at him, I go, you mean audible, don't you? But like, yeah, man, it was cool, and you're like, oh, yeah, I know, <laughs> isn't it awesome, man? When God does that, I was like, oh, <laughs> and you just don't want to leave, you know, you want to stay up on a mountaintop, but you know, anyone that God speaks to, anyone that God uses to use their ears that they have ears to hear what the Spirit says to them but also ears to hear what Jesus said my sheep hear my voice um, you're going to get used and you're going to get kind of like you know following in his footsteps and you might get crucified along the way just got to warn you just got to say do much is given much is required but man oh man it's so much better than playing a video game it's life abundant, and more so than you ever imagined, because the spiritual reality comes crashing in on your physical reality, and your soul just goes, wow, what was that? <laughs> God. Ooh, and it wasn't even a worship service. Man, how did that happen? God said. My prayer for you is that you would go far beyond anything you ever imagined or dreamed of to boldly go where no man has gone before, to explore new, strange new places, new situations, new generations. Really, not to be a Star Trekkie or a Trekker, but rather to be one person who has walked away with God like Enoch, one person who has gone to heaven like Paul, one person who has spoken face to face with Jesus like John, and realize you are called, you are chosen, you could be anointed and appointed to meet with God today.